520 hertz tuning fork is struck and placed next to a tube with a movable piston. So, okay, so I'm given the frequency, um, creating a tube with a variable length. Uh, next to tube is a slid, piston is slid down the pipe and resonance is reached when the piston is 119.5 centimeters uh, from the opponent. So I guess it technically doesn't say, um, oh, I think uh, what it is is the movable piston makes for one closed end. So the, the tube literally is, it starts up being open at both ends and one end becomes closed because we put in the piston. I think that's what it's describing here. Yeah. So, all right. So with that understanding, um, what we have to recognize is, oh, I have this one end, which is a uh, closed end because of the piston. And this end here is actually open. This is the open end. So if we are using pressure representation, then this is where we must have node for standing waves. And this at the, uh, the piston end, which is closed, the, um, the boundary condition here is going to be anti-node when you use the pressure representation, because when there's a wall, it's kind of easy to change the pressure around that. So um, it says piston is slowly down and resonance is reached and piston is this distance away from the open end. Okay, and it says the next resonance is reached when piston is at this distance. And I just compare the numbers, 119.5 centimeter and 82.5 centimeter. And I hope you realize that um, neither of them are fundamental frequent, fundamental way um, or neither of them are length of a piston which would give you the fundamental mode because if it were you could take the fundamental multiply by three to get the other number but you don't get that here so all right so um, we are not dealing with the fundamental maybe we are not quite sure then what this is. This is where a picture helps. So starting out with a node, this is what standing wave here looks like. It ends on anti-node. So imagine pulling this piston out. So at the very far end where it's not open at all, then you have no standing wave. This is the one of the resonances where you get standing wave. And when you are at node here, no standing wave because I need um, anti-node here. But here is another standing wave. And uh, I'm kind of repeating the exercise we went through in the lab that this distance between the two neighboring uh, standing waves, this is actually half of the wavelength. So this should give me half of the wavelength. So when I take the difference here, um, 37 centimeters. This is my uh, lambda over to half of a wavelength. So, all right, then, oh, I guess I can just do the calculation. Then the wavelength here is equal to uh, 74 centimeters. Um, so this must correspond to when the length of the tube is, uh, so one whole wavelength plus a quarter of the wavelength. Um, that's so one whole wave. Oh, I can see exactly what I drew here. Poisonous. So, all right, so you have the wavelength, uh, you have the frequency. So, for the wave speed, you use this trust relationship. Wave speed is frequency times wavelength. So, uh, plug in the numbers, you get the wave speed. And it asks how far from the open end will the piston cause the next mode of resonance? Well, it's gonna be this plus another half of wavelength. Um, do the calculation, or you know, it's gonna be 156.5 centimeters, so a bit. Uh, 